here we have a scratch program that they want us to make using these this little parrot sprite and we want to make it basically fly around in random directions and when the user presses the space key the parrot changes color and does certain things there are some specifications that we need to follow when making the scratch program first of all they ask us to use that exact those exact costumes and sprites um, we must use different sprites to make it look like the sprite is flying so obviously that's where this costume comes in and the sprite must point in a random direction so obviously the directions in degrees so they're giving us a big tip there that it's anything between 0 and 360 um, and that's obviously when the program starts and the sprite must continually move in the direction it's facing until it touches one of the stages edges and then after that it will there'll be a, there must be a delay of 0.2 between the costume changes obviously to make the effect of the flying and then we've got some specifications if the user sp presses the space key which we'll get to later let's first get this part working okay first of all we need the correct sprite so if I go to scratch we don't want the cat so I'm going to click on the, the delete and delete bye bye cat the cat is gone so now we must go get that sprite so we're going to choose one from file and I've got a funny feeling it's under animals and it's a parrot so let's go down to P Let's go down here. There's S. I've gone past it. I think. Oh, there we go. There's our two parrots. So we're going to import the one sprite. So there's it is. It's a bit big. Let's make it a bit small. Let's shrink it so that it's nice and small. Otherwise, it's going to be very lame flying around. It's going to be touching the edges very quickly. Okay. Now let's go to costume. And we're going to import the other costume so that the same sprite has both costumes. So let's go. There we go. Parrot B. We'll go. Okay. So there we go. We've got our little flying bird. Fantastic. It's probably a good idea to rename our sprite. That's a good practice. You should get in the habit of doing that. Okay. So we want to, to do things when the program runs, which means we'll need our hat script, which is when we run the program. And we need it to fly in a random direction. So first of all, we need to make it point in a random direction. So we must say point in direction but it can't point in a direction. We don't want that. We want to have our own direction. So let's have an operator like this, random. So point in the following direction. But we know in the direction, that it could point in any direction between 0 and 360. So it would be a random between 0 and 360. So let's just try to run that. There we go. It's each time I run the program, it points in a random direction. Fantastic. There we go. Okay. Once it's done that, we they said that we must fly. I think it said it points in a random direction, and the sprite must continually move in that direction until it touches one of the edges of the sprite of the stage. So that is going to be basically we're going to keep on doing that forever, but not all. We're not going to use the forever script because that means we and have a condition. Let's rather have forever if. Okay, that makes more sense because we don't want it to, con to do the, the script that's between here when it touches the edge. So our condition, now we need to say, where do, how do we touch when it's touching, when this sprite is touching the edge? When it's touching the edge, we will stop doing this loop. Okay, so forever if it's touching the edge, but it, it must not be touching the edge. So forever if, it will carry on doing this while it is not touching the edge. Is that correct? Let's see if it does that. And it will move. We must make it move. So let's make it move. Let's make it move 10. They don't specify how long it must move for. We should probably change the costume, which is under looks. So let's go next costume. And then let's do the weight. The weight is over here. So we must wait a certain amount of time. If you remember, it said 0 0.2 seconds between costume changes. So let's go Yeah. So this must be a 0 0.2. Now let's see if this works. So it's going to fly. Hopefully when it touches the edge, it will stop. There we go. Now it looks like it hasn't actually touched the edge, but that's obviously because the sprite has got some sort of... Um, when it gets very close to the edge, obviously the, the whole sprite has got little parts to it that surround it. That is, that's why it's touched the edge. So that seems to be working. So it, it works. So if we run it, it flies till it touches the edge. Fantastic. If I start a new one, it'll point in a new, slightly, slightly deviated direction and go towards the edge. Fantastic. I think that's all correct. Now what we wanted to do 
Well, just to go back there, just sorry, a uh, little thing I want to take note of. Some of you might have considered doing this. Um, I think if I remember correctly, it's over here. If it's if it's bouncing motion, there we go. It's probably a F on edge bounce. Okay. Um, the key, the reason why I'm not using F on edge bounce, because you could, some of you might have gone, well, let's just use a forever, and we'll do the movement like that. I'm going to duplicate that. What's the difference between these two? Okay. Well, this one stops when it reaches there. So if we read the question carefully, it says there the sprite. Let's see. The sprite must continually move in the direction it is facing until it touches. So until it touches, that means it must stop moving. So if I do it this way, then obviously when it reaches the edge, it's just going to bounce back and continue moving. So this in that in that scenario in this one, it's always going to be moving. Even if it touches the edge, it'll just change direction and go into a completely different direction. But that's not what we want. We want it to stop. So that's why I use the forever if and take that away. There we go. Now when we click on the space bar, which is quite convenient, it says that when the space bar is pressed, it's quite simple. What do we want to do? When the user presses the space bar, we must point in another random direction which is very similar to what we've done over here. So I'm just going to duplicate that, put that there. Let's just reconstruct this original. So we point in a random direction again. We must change the color and we must think Polly wants a cracker for a limited amount of time. Well, to change the color will be something about the looks, I think. So let's go change set color effect or change color effect would probably be a good one. And we could choose a number. I'm going to leave it as 25. And we must think for a certain amount of time or limited amount of time. So that means we cannot use that one because that one is always thinking. This one is thinking for a limited amount of time. And we want to say Polly wants a cracker. Polly wants a cracker. There we go. So Polly wants a cracker. There we go. So for two seconds it'll display. Two seconds I'll keep it at that. So let's try it. It's going to point in a random direction. It'll start. If I press spacebar it should change color. And think Polly was cracker and keep. Ah, oh, I got to the edge too quickly there, but you get the idea. So let's try it again. Let's run it. Oh, it's flying. It's not touching the edge anymore. There we go. Press space bar. Now other direction. See, obviously it doesn't allow you to press the space bar until the the two seconds of thinking has been passed. So there we go. It's back to its original color. Keep flying away, Polly. Don't go too close to the edge, Polly. There we go. Let's make him touch the edge so we can end this fiasco. There we go. So there we go. So it's very simple. There's the movement. Remembering forever if not touching the edge. So it will continually fly until it touches the edge. And there's the nice animation to make it look like it's flying. And then when we press the space bar, we just do those simple instructions. Just looking at here, this forever if, there is another way that you can do the forever if. Um, instead of using the forever, you could have also used a repeat until. Let's find the repeat until. You could have also used a repeat until. And you would have repeated until you are touching the edge. So you could have done the exact same thing as this. Let's duplicate that and put it there. So that would have been, the, that should have had the same effect repeat until touching the edge. So you could have used either one of those. If you found this video useful and you'd like to see other videos for, especially if you're doing RT or even if you're doing CAT, then you're welcome to go to our channel to go see videos on RT and CAT related stuff. It's from grade 10 all the way to grade 12. Um, subscribe to our channel. Um, go look at our um, Twitter as well. You can, If you follow us on Twitter, we will keep you up to date whenever we do upload new videos. So do it the long, Mr. Long Way, not the long way.